Intermax Aqua Fusion, 120 millimeter ARGB, all in one CPU liquid cooler. This will be the cooler I will be showing you how to install on the AM4 socket. There will be timestamps in the description below. If there's a certain part of the video you'd like to jump to, you're more than welcome to do so. There's some other links down there that may interest you. And don't forget to do all that fun YouTube stuff on your way down that description box. So let's go ahead and we'll flip you over here and we will show you how to get this installed on the AM4 socket. All right, and to be able to get uh, started on installing this, we got everything laid out here that we need. Kind of give you a snapshot and show you everything that you need to install this. We do have the radiator with the hoses and the pump head on it, which this one does have the pump inside of the block head. We do have the, interim, uh, the Intermax RGB fan that comes with the system. We have the two brackets and the five screws to where you attach the AM4 brackets onto the side of the pump. Uh, they do give you five screws, but you only actually need four. They give you an extra one, which is kind of nice. We do have the back plate, which you will need to use their back plate. The uh, back plate with the AM4 socket is not compatible. They call it a spacer pad, but to me it looks more like a pad to stop you from, from the metal back plate actually contacting the back of the motherboard. If if metal contacts the back of your motherboard at any certain point, you know, it could cause trouble. So it's kind of an insulation pad. Uh, we do have the eight screws, the eight long screws here, and the eight short screws. Them are for installing the fan and the radiator, which we'll get into here in a little bit. Here's all the hardware that you need to uh, put your back plate together and to be able to install the pump head onto the back plate. Here's all of the wiring that you may need if you don't have ARGB. We also have the tools laid out here that we will need. We do have thermal paste, which uh, they do, they did send. It does come with the unit. It is the branded thermal paste. I do have my number two magnetic tip screwdriver. I got a six inch extension pit that's also magnetic tip. I got an eye fix screwdriver here with a number one, number one Phillips bit in it. You will need this for them small screws that connects the brackets, AM4 brackets, into the pump head. And we have my little spatula here for spreading out the thermal paste, which we'll get into that here in a little bit. So let me get all this moved out of the way, and we'll get into getting the pump head and the motherboard and start getting this thing installed. All right, guys, I cleared off the table. I just left what we really needed for this. We got the back plate. Got the screws that we need for the AM4 bracket, along with the brackets and the pump head and the radiator. And we have the mounting hardware that we'll need some of these for the back plate to get it ready. I guess we'll start out and just put the AM4 brackets onto the side of the cooler, which should be pretty simple. And to get these mounted, they only go one way on the cooler. And because they do screw in with two screws, there's only one way you can put them in. Which makes it kind of nice so you can't confuse them. So we'll get this one here started in here. And we'll put the two screws to it. We'll get this one started. That way if we need to move it, we can, but we shouldn't have to move it. And go ahead and tighten them down. There you go. There's that one installed. Like I said, there's only one way you can actually put these on, so it's pretty pretty easy to know if you're doing it right or not. Since we're already here, I'm going to go ahead and pull this little plastic plug out of this connector here. And we're gonna hook up this ARGB header here. Um, this will control the lighting on the pump head. The other cable here coming off is just a three pin PMW fan header or a DC fan header with three three plugs. That operates the pump. This one here will actually operate the ARGB. Line up the notches, slide it, slide it right down in there. All right, now our pump head is ready for install. All right, time for the back plate. The side that says AMD on it, you got these inner pieces here that's kind of popping up. That's the side that will be going against your motherboard. Then you take your little insulation pad, or they call it a spacer pad, but I'll rip the center out of it here, best of we can. Gonna peel off this here uh, back, uh, the backing off over here, just like you would any other sticker that you buy. And like I said, to me, this is more of an insulation pad than anything else, which is good to have when any kind of metal is touching your motherboard. Now line it up with your square right there in the middle, and you just kind of push it down. There we go. Of course, the only thing it's going to really connect to is them 
four pieces to stick it up, but that's all right. Apparently that's the way they, they want it done. Let's get this little baggie of goodies pulled out here. And here we have the four post that comes up through your back plate. One for, uh, got two for each side, which we'll, we'll need these here when we get to the motherboard, these little black standoffs. And the four screw, nut screw, or the four thumb screws uh, with the springs. We will need them later on as well. And for the AM4 socket, we need to take these screws and put them in these here. They're kind of long, elongated, uh, elongated holes here. And for AM4, you need them down closest to the Intel points. If you're using any other one, uh, the AM3, the AM2, FM2, whatever, you need to move them up to the top point. But you need to keep them. For the AM4 socket, you need to keep them close to this Intel bracket. They do give you these little washers to push down over to kind of hold these in spot. They do fit pretty tightly. There we go. And you just do the other three the exact same way. All right. And that's what holds the post in place on the back plate. And just put all four of them on the exact same way. All right. Now, since we've got the block head ready and we have the back plate ready, we'll get the motherboard slid over here and we will get the back plate and the pump head installed on the motherboard. Here we go. We have the motherboard with the CPU installed. The M.2 NVMe hard drive is installed in the top slot there like it should be. Now, if you've already got a CPU cooler installed, you'll have to replace your, uh, take off your CPU cooler however you installed it. It's just the reverse steps. In today's example, I'm gonna show you like if it's a brand new build, you're building it for the first time, AM4 comes with these two little brackets. We will have to get these brackets removed. Uh, number two Phillips, take out the two screws on each black plastic bracket and lift the black uh, the brackets off um, I always recommend to keep a hold of these brackets as there is some aftermarket coolers and AIOs that will utilize these brackets and you never know what your uh, cooling needs will be in the future and if you'll need them or not I recommend keeping them in the motherboard box with the rest of the spare parts from your build that way everything is in one spot and it's easy for you to find if you ever do need them again um, there we go brackets is off now since we can't use the included am4 back plate we will have to remove that lift up the motherboard take the back plate off now i put the back plate that we just prepped set it down there i'm gonna line up the screw sticking up and we're going to set it right down on top of there i do recommend setting while doing this I do recommend while doing this to use the top of your motherboard box. This is for a few reasons. Number one, it pushes the back plate up through where it should be. Number two, it protects the back of your motherboard. Number three, it actually protects your desk or your mat or whatever you're working on from them short points from the back of your motherboard. Um, at this point, I believe I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install my thermal paste. There is different schools of thought on this. Um, some people say put a dot in the middle. Some people say to spread it out. Some people say use the next pattern. So there is uh, different schools of thought and how different people think and feel about putting on thermal paste. Me, I am old school, you know, I am of age. I'm, I've been doing this for many, many years. There is a couple of reasons why I do like to spread mine out. I still continue to spread mine out, which there is a video on the channel because I go check it out. You know, if there's any difference with the way you put your thermal paste on. Um, me personally, I like still to spread mine out. It only takes a few seconds. And by spreading it out, I know I got good coverage and I'm not putting too little or too much on. If I put too much on, I always I can scrape off the excess. If I have too little, I can add a little bit more. So you can be a little bit more precise with how much thermal paste you're actually using if you do spread it out. And it don't seem like they give you much more than what you actually need. I mean, it, but anyways, we'll give that a try. And if I need to add more, I can. And if I need to remove some, I can also do it that way. I'm gonna go ahead and start spreading mine out here. And uh, I will be back when I get it spread out in a nice little thin layer or completely cover on the CPU. I think that's a pretty good application of thermal paste right there, I believe. There is a few little spots in it, but it'll heat up and spread out as need be. I think it'll be all right. Be able to install the water block and the pump onto the CPU. You need these little black spacers. They do want to go down over the, the standoffs one way here. One way they slide all the way down. And But if you put them on backwards, they won't slide down all the way. You want to make sure they slide down all the way. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind and make sure that they do slide all the way down when you put them on. 
if the if you put them on like this then you ain't going to get the pressure that you need to keep your cpu cool so you do need to keep them uh make sure these spacers go all the way down on your motherboard i don't know why they would make these spacers this way but they have done it this way and they do fit kind of snugly so i guess that would kind of keep the keep it all pulled together for you but you just put all four of them on there like i said make sure they all go down on there all the way down all right now since we've got the spacers on there we've got a thermal paste put on there as far as the water block goes it does have uh intermax that comes that lights up across here be able to make sure intermax is in the right orientation your hoses do need to be by your ram slots don't know if you can see that on the video or not but it says please remove before install if you don't remove this piece of plastic your cpu will definitely overheat and you'll have to take this back off to remove this piece of plastic so you want to make sure you do pull this piece of plastic off now let's get that pulled off here which gives you that nice copper plate there to attach flip it up here and like i said you know you want to make sure your hoses are towards the ram slots and if we put the brackets and everything and the standoffs in the right position they should just slide right down on top of each other and it looks like we did our job fairly well um this there is one spot when putting these thumb screws down on here on these tension screws on here you do want to do this in a cross pattern you don't want to put too much pressure on one side of your cpu over the other um that could cause uh overheating issues that could also cause your, your system just not to boot up if there's too much pressure on one side of the cpu over the other and right now i'm just taking my thumbs and just kind of getting these started with the thumb screws here okay now since i got them started i'll go back with my number two fill-up and i'll give them a couple turns each and a couple turns each here and a couple more turns here and a couple more here and since these screws are spring loaded you should be able to bottom them out they should stop you from over tightening too much but just like anything else in a computer build you know you don't want to do more than about wrist tight because you ain't stealing against air you ain't stealing against water so you just want them about wrist tight or what you can reasonably do with by hand with a normal size screwdriver you don't want them extremely tight but you want them nice and snug but there you go all right guys and for the cabling that's on this um the only cable you got right now is your three pin for your pump you do have this argb header depending on your system and how many fans you're running how many fan splitters you got and how much argb you got in your system this will vary from system to system i do have quite a few fans in my system and i do have a other argb but just for reference for today um you do have this three pin fan header we're going to connect it to what says cpu pin right here it is a four pin fan header but that three pin will if you line them notches up on the side of the fan header they will slide right down on your argb it is the three pin five volt i got one right here one right here above my ramp slots we're just going to line it up and slide it down over you have no other fans in your system which i hope is not true you have no other argb in your system which if that's true you are a good computer builder there you go that's the way you have connect your argb and your fan connection up by connecting that three pin straight up to your motherboard cpu header you may have to get in the bios and turn off a setting before you don't get an error every time you boot it up it may not recognize that there's a fan connected uh depending on your motherboard you know it's kind of questionable if you ought to hook that up to that header or if you should hook a four pin pmw fan header up to that header just get around that um you can do your own research on that so uh let me get reset up here and i'll show you how to install the fan and the and the radiator all right now we got the motherboard installed with the pump and the head unit installed there i got the case set up here kind of like what you would be what you would have if you had a regular stand-up case which we'll go through the components to make up this system here in a few minutes you do have a few options here you could actually install this on the front of the case here in one of these 120 fan slots if you like to or and like in today's example we're going to be using it as an exhaust we're going to be putting it back here as an exhaust on the way out when installing your fan you need to keep in mind if you're going to use it as an intake on the front of the case you need to install the fan without the brackets facing the outer order of the case with the brackets facing inside the case if you're going to be using it as an exhaust like i'm going to be using it as 
You need it in the same orientation. You need the brackets to be facing outside the case and the open fin port of the fan facing inside the case, which is the same as if you're gonna do a top, if you have a slot on top of the case to do it, it's also the same concept. You want the front of the fan without the brackets facing inside the case and the brackets holding the fan hub on. You need it facing outside of the case. And then you have another choice to make. Don't you love water cooling? On the radiator, you need to make up your mind if you want it to be pulling air in through the radiator, like so, or if you want to be, if you want it to be sucking air through the radiator. There's different schools of thought on which is best, but I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference either way. But like I mentioned, I'm gonna be using it as an exhaust on the back of the case here in today's example. I'm gonna be putting the fan as an exhaust. So I'm gonna be installing it onto the radiator like this. That way it pulls air into the radiator and pushes it out the back of the radiator, which will be pushing outside the case. Or you could also sandwich it, sandwich the case. You know, like put your radiator on the front of it, like so, and then put your fan out here, sandwiching it between the case if you like. There's a lot of different options with this, depending on your case and your setup and how you want it to look. As far as attaching the fan and the radiator, they do give you eight of these long screws and they give you eight of these wee little short screws. The long screws is designed to go through the fan into the radiator, or they are designed to go through the fan, through the case, and into the radiator. And these little short screws, which we'll be using in the way I'm gonna set mine up, is just to go through the case and to install the radiator onto the case. So for what I'm doing today, I will be using long screws to attach the fan to the radiator and then we'll be using the short screws to attach the radiator to the back of the case. Um, when it's on the fan, like in today's example, I want to keep the cable where they'll run back behind the motherboard for we can hide them later on. And you just take the four long screws and we put them down through the fan here. I'm gonna get my screwdriver and I'm gonna put the screws into the radiator. Like everything else I do, I'm just getting these started right now with a couple of turns. So I get all four of them started that way if I need to Move it around just a little bit, I can do so. Okay, now since I got them all started, I'm gonna go ahead and just snug these down. You don't need them real tight, just like anything else you do with computers, you ain't get, you ain't sealing it. There we go. And as far as the cables go for that fan, you do have a RGB lead here, and you also have a four pin fan connector, which is PMW. That's something to keep in mind when you do the cabling in your system. Depending on the way your system's set up, you know, you connect them into the other A or GB. It is a standard five volt, three pin header, and your four pin fan header, PMW, depending on how many fans you got and splitters you got and how you want to run the cable. It's gone very from build to build. Since we got the fan installed on the radiator, I'm gonna flip it around here, see if I can do this and get you a decent view of it. And we're gonna take the eight the four little screws and we're going to put them through the case and into the radiator just to hold the radiator to the case here okay there's the last one now we're just going to go around and snug them down but that's the way you install the radiator and the fan and all the different situations you may run into while trying to install it and the decisions need to be made um the main thing is to keep in mind on this the pump is inside this blockhead so you want some port of the all-in-one higher than what the pump head is which my tubes is all the way up here which is going to be the highest port but also you can see that the radiator is going to also if you're going to be running in a stand-up form like this that the radiator is higher than what the pump head is in this case which is a good thing or in my case i'm going to be laying it down flat but still yet that radiator is going to be higher than what the pump is so it should be all right so let me finish up the getting this ready i'll get some glamour shots of it for you how to install this on the AM4 socket. But if you'd like to have more information about this all-in-one, there'll be a link in the description below. There's some other links down there that may interest you. Don't forget to do all that fun YouTube stuff on your way down that description box. You all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.